So, in the previous lecture, we have seen the pair distribution function that is the GR and uh, we also said that this GR value is equal to 1 when there is no presence felt between two atoms or two molecules. So, from this GR we will then go to radial distribution function which is actually the GR and then we will find out the thermodynamic properties. So, this particular lecture is used to derive the various properties such as we will see the properties such as energy or in particular configuration and energy and then we will also see an important property that is pressure. So, we start with today's lecture this thermodynamic properties from radial distribution function. So, primarily our focus will be on the RDF the radial distribution function then an important aspect we will actually investigate is the coordination number. So, we will see what that coordination number means and how it is obtained from the RDF because uh, like to mention you that all these methods will be useful in the computer simulation methods which we will do in the next class. So, what it does is it takes care of the molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo simulation where you frequently are asked to calculate the coordination number. So, for that this particular aspect is very important. So, uh, let us go back and see if we can have a pair correlation function and from the pair correlation function we can get the average value of the interaction energy. So, you have the interaction energy means one atom with another one and then sum it up to all the atoms. Now, what is I ask you what is the interaction energy of all the atoms together which each and every. So, each and every interaction we have to account for. So, for that we have to find an average value. If we are finding that interaction energy because at every instant of time like in molecular dynamics or Monte Carlo your properties will change. So, if you remember we did the fluctuations, the fluctuation of the properties whether it is canonical ensemble or GAN canonical ensemble. So, your this average energy is thus defined. So, it is the average energy across a sufficient amount of time. So, let us start from the first principle. So, I will uh, define the average uh, something like this U C average C is termed as configurational. So, C comes into the picture as a superscript. So, then you have this definition based on definition you will be having. So, what I will do whatever integration I will just multiply that property with that Boltzmann factor. So, here it is the property of u which is a function of r, r is the vector. So, then multiplied by the same factor e to the power of minus u again r same factor r is a vector by kg and then it is dr this this is again a vector. So, just note that this r is equal to you know it is all the atoms r 1, r 2 these are all vector quantities. So, if we are considering n number of atoms in the system, so there will be n vectors. So, I am multiplying the property at any instant of time into the Boltzmann weighting property. So, I am multiplying these two. So, then if I multiply these two it means I need to also normalize it. So, you have to normalize by the configurational term. So, that is the Zn, this Zn term. So, this is the definition for Uc. So, from this definition you can uh, write down the potential energy because you have written this Ur. Now, what is this Ur? So, will you keep on finding all the interaction energies with all the atoms together? No, you cannot do that. So, for that what you will do? You will use this type of expression u of r 1, r 2. So, these are all the vector quantities because I have already written r as this or uh, I can write this r. So, whether this and this the same thing. So, it is nothing but summation of all possible pairs. So, all possible pairs of atoms. So, i into j. So, obviously, i is less than j and then uh, you add up all the interatomic potential r i j is the interatomic separation. So, this is the potential being pairwise additive we have to use this expression. So, what I will do I will put this expression in the place of u r. So, configurational energy takes the form. So, you will be having this form. So, I will write here from the previous expression u c then it will be summation then 
it will be u r i j. So, there is two summation, let me just elaborate on it. So, if I write the two summation here, so I have to put the indices r i j. This is the two summation which we have just now found out and then it becomes the remaining equations are the same dr of i divided by uh, it becomes z n. Now these two summations are there. So, how many pairs are possible between n number of atoms? It is n into n minus 1 by 2. These many pairs will be possible, right? So, if you have 10 uh, atoms, you will have 10 into 9 by 2 into 1. So, it will be 45 uh, pairs. Similarly, for n number of atoms, so I can reduce this summation form, take it outside and multiply them with n into n minus 1 by 2. So, that is exactly that is a step what I will do is n into n minus 1 by 2, okay. This is the number of pairs. If this is true, then obviously I can uh, take out the integral, I can write like this u of r12. So, what I will do now, I will try to find out between two atoms now, instead of ij, only for two atoms. So, if you write like that, so you will get and remaining part, I will just skip the other integrals of dr. So, what will be that expression? If I speak the other integrals, so integral will go like this e to the power of minus u by kt into except for the 1 and 2, everything will be there, okay, by zn. Okay, so, you got what it is, it means I have taken these two pairs outside, it is becomes n into n minus 1 by 2, then instead of ij, I am interested only in the 1, 2, that is I am trying to constrain the entire integral by taking out the coordinates of 1 and 2. So, the potential which is be applied, that can be taken outside. So, it is the potential only between existing between interatomic radius 1, 2. Why are we doing this? Because we need to reduce it to the radial distribution function. So, this if you notice carefully, this particular term is nothing but g of r, is not it? g of r, specifically r is here, r1 and r2. Obviously, the it is also a function of rho and t. So, this becomes a g2 of actually r because it is two atoms are involved, 1 and 2. So, can we write that expression in terms of that function? So, it will then becomes n into n minus 1 by 2, then this, then the interacting potential which is a function of only the distance between 1 and 2. Then what it is, I can write here u r 1 2, then n minus 2 factorial by n factorial rho square then this is as it is, it will be g2 of r1, r2, rho of t, this one, okay. Because here we have this u r12, so I will just having r1, dr1, dr12 outside, okay. This is the expression, okay. Just I want to remind you with this particular expression, you should know so that it will be easy. So, if for a nth order partition, uh, nth order distribution function, which is a function of r1, r2 to rn and also of rho and t, we have derived this expression, okay. From there actually this I am substituting n minus n factorial by v by n to the power of n, then we got this integral e to the power of minus u by kt dr of n plus 1 to dr n by z n, okay. So, this particular expression I have used in this form, in this particular form. So, I have uh, reduced everything so, and this g you know, what is this g? It is also you should know carefully. This g is this entire thing, if I want to write out this g, it is v n. So, here g, so in the case of g, let us say it is only g2. So, g2 will be only simply equal to v square into u by kt 
then dr3 zn. So, this is that expression right. So, we have given this from the previous uh, our lecture if you notice this carefully we have written the expression of g2. So, this g2 we have seen it is multiplied by the v to the power of number of atoms. So, that is what using these two expression let us uh, suppose this is expression a and this is expression b I have reduced the expression in this form as expression c. So, then we move ahead the final expression thus becomes so from the previous expression then I can take out the other terms and I can write like this it will be rho square by 2 summation r 1 2 then I will write the pair distribution function what I have got in terms of r 1 2 now. Now I am writing in terms of r 1 2. So, when I write in terms of r 1 2 so what I will do is that I will have to write these two terms r d r 1 d r 2 ok. This becomes rho square by 2 into v u of r 1 2 u of r 1 2 g 2 of r 1 2 rho of t the pair distribution function into d r 1 2. Now, see I have double integral here I have turned into a single integral because if you notice we had a z term here right. So, that z term if I insert here this z term in the term of interatomic distance 1 2 reduces to dr 1 by v. So, that dr 1 by v is here. So, dr 1 gets cancelled with this dr 1 and the v which was in the denominator of this entire expression that goes up. So, that is why this v comes into the picture and this rho is nothing but the rho square which we have used to define the pair distribution function. So, if you simplify this expression further what you will get is rho square v by 2. So, because it has become a single integral I can do this integration quite easily. So, it become rho square 2 by v into 4 pi integral z u of r 1 2 g 2 which is a function of r 1 2 rho and t then r 1 2 whole square. So, it will be r 1 2 whole square applying the limits and then d r 1 2 and then I will figure it out further because it is rho square v. So, I can write rho as n by v whole square. So, n by v whole square means it is n by v into n. So, it will have to be rho into n I can write down and this 2 2 cancels out. So, it will be 2 pi n rho ok because rho you should understand it is n by v. So, if it is n by v it becomes n square by v square. So, v v cancels. So, we will have a single v here and a single n. So, n by v becomes rho and the remaining n is here. So, this is 2 pi n rho into u of r 1 2 and this is your radial distribution function between the two atoms 1 and 2. So, I now need not write or all the time g I can simply write here g of r into rho into t into r square to dr ok. So, the entire configuration of energy is nothing but 2 pi n rho u r 1 2 into the radial distribution function into r square into dr. So, we have reduced all the possible interaction pair I can calculate if I know the radial distribution function and the interatomic potential of any of the two atoms 1 and 2. So, assuming spherical particles or spherical molecules RDF thus depends only on the scalar distance between them r. So, this r is nothing but the r 1 2 which is the scalar distance that is what it says. So, whatever we have it only depends upon the scalar distance we need not to know what is the uh, like the velocity and neither we need to know the position vectors of each and every element. So, we need only to know what is the interatomic distance between the two atoms. So, this expression let me just again go back and see what is the physical significance. So, it means if I want to write that expression again this particular expression 
So, we got this expression just I am writing it again. So, total integral u c is becomes equal to 2 pi n rho u of r g of r into r square dr. What does it mean? It means that this particular expression I can imagine in this manner. You keep a molecule is at the origin. You keep a molecule at the origin. Let us suppose this is the molecule. These are the origin. Okay. So I am now asking what is the energy of interaction with a single molecule at a distance r if its potential is given by u r. So I am asking it is at this r distance. Let us suppose there is another molecule at this point. So what is the energy of interaction between these two atoms? So this is atom one. This is atom two. What is the distance? We have to find out what is the number of molecules in a spherical shell of thickness dr at the r. So, if I want to draw this particular shell, it will be something like this. So, you have a elemental shell. So, this is your dr. So, it means number of molecules you have to find out in a spherical shell of thickness dr at a distance r away, which is nothing but 4 pi rho r square gr dr. So, if you recollect the previous expression before we derive this expression is something like this. It was 4 pi into rho square v by 2 into u r 1 2 into g 2 of r 1 2 rho and t into r 1 2 whole square into dr 1 2. So, from here we actually then got this. Okay. So, if you see something like that is happening, this particular expression if you see this 4 pi is there. So, that is nothing but I am asking what is the number of molecules in a physical shell of thickness dr. So, this is the molecule that is 4 pi rho r square gr. So, 4 pi this is rho r square dr. So, this expression is similar to that I am asking number of molecules in a spherical shell of thickness r. Then how do we obtain the total integration? So, sorry, how do we obtain the total interaction energy? This is for a pair of atoms. Now, what if I want to pair all the atoms? So, it means you have to go this distance from r 1 2 to all different r. So, you should go from 0 to infinity. So, that is why we integrate values from 0 to infinity. Okay. So, it means in this case if you notice if I do this 0 to infinity with the interatomic potential of 1 2. So, this r 1 2 will go from 0 to infinity. So, it will capture this r across all the possible elemental volume which is spread across the atom 1. So, it means the formula is like we have to find out the number of molecules present in this dr and then we apply the integral from 0 to infinite across all the interatomic distances. That will give us the exchange function that is the total configurational energy. So, if you see that particular expression, I am writing it again this u c rho square v by 2. So, now I am writing rho square 4 pi. Then you have the interatomic potential r 1 2 into g 2 into r 1 2 whole square into d r 1 2. Okay. So, this is 2 pi n rho u r g r r square d r Cartesian coordinates. Okay. So, if you see there are, so it means this particular formula if you notice and this line you just read what you have written that is n molecules are there in the system. So, I multiply by n, hence multiply by a factor n. So, it explains the origin of all the terms of this particular expression. First was the volume, now is the n. But this problem is because it is 4 this 4 it is overcounted by a factor of 2 because as a single interaction we have we want only a single interaction with 1 and 2 but 
when you do the integral from 0 to infinity, you can have to take these two terms will come because molecule 1 may be the central atom and then you calculate where is molecule 2 and other atoms or we can also take molecule 2 as the central molecule and then calculate the interaction about all atoms. So, this molecule 1 or molecule 2 there will be some terms which is 1 2 is equal to 2 1. So, these will be half such terms. So, those half such terms are there that is why you divide by a factor of 2. So, this factor of 2 divides this 4 and it becomes 2 that is the reason we divide the result by a factor of 2. So, this explains all the particular terms in this exchange uh, energy term. So, you have u r g r r square d r. So, now we come to an important uh, conclusion now since we have got average energy values or the configuration energy values we now go to the determination of pressure. For pressure we will see we have two ways one is the pressure equation one is the compressibility equation. In both equation you need g r ok you need g r the only difference is for the pressure equation you need to g r at a particular temperature and density. In the compressibility equation you need a g r ranging from density 0 to infinity that is the difference. So, you have to know for a pressure equation to predict pressure you need both T and rho at that particular uh, at that particular uh, point a particular point you need that temperature and density. But in this case you need a G r for calculating pressure for all the part that is from 0 to infinity densities all the part 0 to infinity ok. So, uh, well we write the expression as we got earlier. So, we get K T this is the expression we have been writing throughout this lecture and uh, then uh, we can write in terms of the configurational integral. So, dou L and Z by dou V ok. So, but this Z you know Z is a function of N V T. So, it is e to the power of minus u by k t. So, obviously, u is a function of r d r n. So, this is tricky because if we convert we have to convert into rectangular coordinates ok. So, a rectangular coordinates means all this r we have to write in x y z terms. So, if you do that then this z takes the form like this. So, it will be 0 of v to the cube root v of volume to the power of 1 by 3. Then instead of r we write here uh, you know x 1 y 1 z 1 then x 2 y 2 z 2 like that x n y n actually this should be capital N because um, considering capital N number of molecules so x n y n z n by k t then uh, instead of d r 1 this is the volume element you have to write in this manner. So, it will be d x 1 d y 1 d z 1 for the first elemental volume then you multiply by the second elemental volume d x 2 d y 2 d z 2 like that you go to d x n d y n and d z n. Now, the issue is in the integral we have v and but here we have x. So, this is a problem you cannot the solving this particular integral is problematic because in the integrand limits you have v terms of v we do not have terms of x here when we convert it to rectangular coordinates. So, what they do is they will just convert this v in some dimensionless form that is x, y and z respectively. So, we convert this entire expression by changing the integral limits in terms of x, y and z. So, we do a change of variable what is this change of variable? It will be x 1 star x 1 if I write as star it will be x 1 by v to the power of 1 by 3 dimensionless quantities. Then let us say or maybe I will write here x i to make it general x i then you have y i 
y i star will be y i by b to the power of 1 by 3 and uh, you have z i star is equal to z i to the power of v 1 by 3 dimensionless terms. So, then if you do the dimensionless top then you can write the integral. So, the integral if you do that it will be coming simply v n will be outside ok. Because uh, you have a uh, n number of elements and n number of elements if you integrate over the entire volume you will have v term on all the terms. So, in n number of terms v to the power of n that is why v, v to the n terms appears at the prefactor. So, then the limits will be from 0 to 1. Now, instead of 0 to uh, that v, now I have to convert it and then you write e to the power of minus u like you are doing that z n by k t. Now, instead of this you will write here d x 1 star d of y 1 star like this up to d z n star ok. Let us just change the variable only the mathematics is there and uh, we will again use the same thing u we will be using the double i and j u of r i r j because this also needs to change because I am writing uh, this uh, u in terms of x 1. So, we have to see what is the relation between r i r j with the rectangular coordinates. Uh, so, we have to write like that. So, it will be so, here this is equal to i is less than equal to 1 and obviously, j will lie between i and n ok. So, double summation this brings out to this term that is 1 i and i simply it will become r i j. These were vectors r i and r j from r i and r j as vectors we go to interatomic distance r i j ok. This way we have to write. So, now this r i j then can be further written as this what is this r i j then it will be x i minus x j whole square plus y i minus y j whole square plus z i minus z j whole square to the power of half. So, square root square root of the distances in their ordinates. So, um, then uh, we can also find uh, and write like this. So, if we write a particular symbol l, l can be x, y or z. So, I can write in this way l i minus l j summation whole square or this becomes v to the power of 1 by 3 into summation. Now, I write here in terms of L star now instead of x absolute coordinate I will now in terms of dimensionless variable. So, instead of x y z I am converted to x star y star z star. So, if you do that it will become L i star minus L j star whole square to the power of half ok. This is the expression for r i j because we need these r i j values because we will require the derivative of this r i j with respect to volume. So, solving we get uh, so we will get the d r if you solve that I am not doing it the entire thing. So, you will get the derival, derivation of d r i j by d v if you do it correctly this you will get as simply be equal to r i j by 3 v ok. If you do the derivative with respect to v you will get this. So, then we come back to the original expression that is dou z by dou v this is what we want to calculate from that expression because it was dou l and z by dou, dou v. So, I am what I am doing is I will try to write 1 by z into dou z by dou v. So, let us calculate first dou z by dou v the derivative. So, derivative is at the constant uh, number of molecules and temperature this will be equal to this is very tricky to do dou of dou v v to the power of n e to the power of u of r 1 r n by k t 
now this will be in terms of the variables d of x1 d of then uh, y1 like that you keep on doing d of zn this is the expression you have to evaluate so it's a bit tricky so what you do is uh, there will be two terms you have v term here and this another term here so this is the first term this is the second term so this is the first term and this becomes the second term first term second term do the derivation so first i will do what vn and then i will operate on the remaining terms so if you do that correctly you will get n into v of n minus 1 then the integral as it is to the minus u by kt this does not change much plus then the next term now vn will be as it is and I do the in so this will be as it is but inside because there is a term when I do with respect to volume so that actually takes the form du so r1 to rn or vectors du by dv into minus 1 upon kt because this, this has volume terms in it in this particular expression of interatomic potential. So you have minus 1 by kt coming down as a factor then uh, you can keep the this e to the power of minus u of r1 rn and then the remaining terms are as it is dx1 dzn okay so these two terms are there define this one and this term so part by part we have done so if you do it correctly i am not writing all the steps this dou z by dou v takes the form the final form as uh, n by v into v n then summation 0 to 1 e to the power of minus u r this by kt then the dx1 star by d of zn then minus vn by kt but then you have this term dv d of dv you have to do for this term just uh, remember I wrote the interatomic potential the interatomic potential will be u of rij because we are writing in terms of interatomic distances so minus u by kt then again it will be dx1 star by dzn star so this final expression becomes this we have to do this simplification further Uh, because we divide it by 1 by z if you divide by 1 by z you will get so because uh, I have got the expression for dz by dv so I am writing 1 by z of dz by dv okay this is same as dou ln z by dou v so if I do that uh, I will get n by v into z minus v by n by kt n into n minus 1 by 2 the possible pairs then uh, the terms du of r12 by dv e to the power of minus u by kt okay then same So you have noticed in the previous slide when I multiply n by v there was a term which was remaining it is only z that is the configuration entropy so I have to replace it by z. Now this particular thing uh, du by dv okay I can write in this manner so everything remains the same so it will be n by v into z minus vn by kt n into n minus 1 by 2 then this is 0 to 1 then this is also 0 to 1 so I will write here du r12 
instead this I will write here dr1 by 2 here and again dr1 by 2 here and I will take dv here outside dv this way I will write okay. Why am I writing this because we have calculated this derivative. So if you do the maths correctly so we will get this value 1 by z into dou z by dou v equals to dou ln z by dou v which is equal to obviously this is a constant number of molecules and temperature this will be simply because this is rho n by v is rho so it will be and you are dividing by z so z z cancels out n by v remains it is only rho rho minus n into n minus 1 by 6 ktv then this becomes v changing the modes so now we come to the volume because we have written r12 so it will be du r12 by dr12 this, this will be simply r12 e to the power of minus u by kt 1 So because uh, we have uh, this expression so we uh, what we do is we have converted from 0 to 1 to the entire volume okay and I have divided by this z okay this is the expression. So finally what you get is the determination of pressure we get is 1 by v dou z by dou v is equal to rho into n into n minus 1 by 6 ktv then uh, you have the integral the, the entire volume du r12 by dr12 e to the power of minus u by kt dr dr n by z So if you do this correctly so you will obtain this expression finally. So finally you will get 1 by z or into dou z by dou v sorry I should not write complete integral because it is a function of uh, two properties that is n and t the partial derivative. So this will be equal to I am just skipping some steps because you can do that the integral 6 kt v cube then dr12 then this will be r12 g2 now I have converted everything into g2 a radial distribution function and then dr1 dr2 because uh, I can always write like this this entire expression if I uh, want to write so if this particular point I can write like this I am not write the entire e equation so I can write in this manner v then I can write du by dr12 into r12 then I can always write in this manner write in terms of pair distribution function. So because I am all concerned of the other 1 and 2 so every atom will be there except this by z okay then you will have only dr1 outside dr1 and dr2 outside. So from this entire thing I am getting this gr okay this gr is thus defined though I have converted all the expression subsumed it into a pair distribution function which is gr. So this G2 comes into the picture. So let us write it further. I will write down these two expressions, the pressure equation and the this equation. So you have this uh, P is equal to KT. Now I will write the entire expression of pressure dou ln Z by dou V. So this now I will take, I will multiply by KT and that previous expression it will be rho square by 6v v dou u r12 by dou r12 
R12, G of R12, then DR1 and DR2. Okay, this is the entire expression. Writing the pressure term. So now we can do what we can do is I can uh, change this DR12. So this DR1 into DR12 it will be. DR1 into DR12. So right, let me write the final expression. What you get is finally P will be. If you do, I am just skipping some steps. You can go through the original textbook of Sandler where he have given the entire derivation. So it will be rho kt minus 2 pi by 3 into rho square 0 to infinity dur by dr into gr to r cube by dr. So this is what you call the pressure equation. So, just I uh, will suggest you to follow the book of Sandler because the entire derivation is there. It is not possible for me to make you understand each and every step because it involves multidimensional integral. But the final expression you get of a pressure is in terms of radial distribution function that is gr. So, if you see if you want to compute a pressure at any instant of time, you need the density and temperature and the radial distribution function at that instant you will get pressure. Similarly, there was there is another expression which is the compressibility equation that is comes from this expression kt of dou rho by dou p at t which is equal to my this is entire expression is something like this if I want to put here minus 1 is equal to 4 pi rho 0 to infinity g2 which is a function of r rho and t minus 1 r square dr. So, this is the compressibility equation. So, here if you need to find out pressure this particular pressure you need to integrate you need to have the value of gr that is ranging from all the density from 0 to infinity that is important. So, this is the way you can derive pressure either from the pressure equation or from the compressibility equation. So, we now go to the coordination number this is the one which is very important. So, how you can calculate how many atoms are around a central molecule. So, it is similar what we do we take a elemental volume and then we try to actually integrate that particular volume to find what is the number of molecules. So, if you see if I want to draw this particular uh, graph which will be easy to understand in the case of gr so this will be gr let us suppose this is 1 and let us suppose this is 2 what I am drawing is the argon atom an argon atom so suppose there are two argon atoms here is one argon atom here is another argon atom so, how are they separated? How are they interacting with each other? So, if I draw, let us suppose I apply a, this is the experimental diagram. I am drawing an experimental diagram, then you can tell me or you can then judge what particular potential I will apply. Do I apply a hard sphere potential? Do I apply a square well potential? Or do I apply a softer potential such as Leonard Jones potential? Let us see the plot. So, the plot will be something like this, it will go like this, earlier there will be nothing, then it will go up, 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 then it will come down, then again up, then again up, comes down, then it goes. So, if you see this particular, it falls flat at unity, at long distances. So, for argon argon, this particular limit, this is the interatomic distance in Armstrong, so R12 atoms. So, this is 5 amps strong and uh, you can see this is close to I will say 8 amps strong this one. So, it means what does it say? It says that the atoms cannot overlap. So, you see in the initial part till 3 amps strong or so 3 amps strong gr is 0. What does that mean? That when these two comes close to each other it is not at all possible the two atoms cannot come close to each other which is less than their molecular diameter. 
so that's why gr is zero so it cannot happen so it is not there will be no atoms in the neighborhood of its molecular diameter so gr is zero so in this case for a hard sphere fluid the center to center distance thus is always twice the radius of the hard sphere so this particular distance we have to exclude so this is the distance which is the excluded volume where you cannot observe any other atom of argon to close to each other but after that when the excluded volume goes away the separation distance there will be a first coordination shell of atoms where the density of atoms will be greater than the bulk density so that gr is very very high now if you see this curve is going up 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 is going up and finally it is reaching the uh, let's say some sort of maxima so what does that mean it means if i have a central atom in this place and i make a sphere where the interatomic distance is close to 5 armstrong so the possibility of observing the argon atoms in its neighborhood is a maximum so maximum possibility it means this particular area you won't have anything because it's zero but as you go closer to this particular elemental volume the curve rises it means the two atoms feels the presence of each other once it feels the presence of each other it rises 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 at least it is goes to a maximum so it means at this point you are twice or you will have two times more probability observe the argon atoms in its vicinity as compared to some other distance so you get a peak here that is the first maxima then if you see it drops down why does it drop down because once you have this atoms in this zone because it will have a atom a molecular diameter it will try to repel the other atoms coming close to each other so there will be a steric hindrance it means there will be again some sort of you know this excluded volume where you cannot have or see the presence of other atoms that's why it goes down and in fact it falls below one unity because these atoms are not perfectly packed so that's why it goes beyond unity again as you go to higher and higher distance you will find another of this particular shell where you have the atoms here molecular diameters so this particular shell then becomes again rises and it forms a maxima where if you see around 8 atoms sorry not around 8 am strong it's almost close to two molecular diameters you will see a maximum it means here the presence of each other is felt but to a very small extent okay it in this case the first solvation shell this we call as the first solvation shell presence felt much more as compared to the second solvation shell presence is less then as you go further away from this shell to this direction the central atom does not feel the presence of other atoms so whatever you have gr is unity it means the outside the all the density of the atoms is equal to the bulk density it does not feel the presence so it is becomes unity so at longer and larger distance it becomes unity so it means that's what i have written the gr which is the maximum close to the minimum so this minimum given by the interaction potential now if you see this particular diagram it more or less we can use a softer potential that is the lg potential so it is resembling the opposite of the lg potential because in the lg potential you have some sort of diagram something like this okay if you remember this is u and uh, you know this is u and r so this is the interaction potential well so this is ur and this is r so this lg potential this resembles a minimum that is the interaction potential well so wherever gr which is a maximum it represents the interaction potential well of the softer potential such as lj then it exhibits ex oscillatory behavior after a minimum this is after this you will have a means it will something like this and slowly it will go it's oscillatory behavior so steric hindrance blocks out other molecules results in less than average atomic density which is the reason it goes down okay so it means the formation of a second coordination shell in the vicinity of twice the atomic diameter so if you see you have this at 5 am strong it goes up to 8 am strong close to 8 am strong so you have a uh, you know this uh, like this you have then it goes like this and again you have like this so this particular region from here to here go to 8 am strong you get the 
twice the second coordination shell. So this becomes the second coordination shell, the vicinity of twice the atomic diameter. So atomic diameter, if you consider it is somewhere here, 4 Armstrong, because this is your excluded volume. So twice means 8 Armstrong. So atomic packing in the first coordination shell is not perfect. That is what I have said, because in the first coordination shell, atoms are there, but they are not perfectly packed. The packing beyond the first coordination shell becomes increasingly disordered. Because it is a liquid, in the kinds of liquid it becomes increasingly disordered. So you are likely to see much more oscillatory behavior than that of the argon atom, argon atom radial distribution function. So then there will be a dampening of further maxima and minima in the radial distribution with increasing distance which is true because as you go far apart the field, the presence is not felt. So depending on the density, successive coordination shells barely visible beyond 3 to 5 atomic diameter. So if you go from 4 Armstrong to let us say you go to 12 Armstrong, you will see this oscillatory behavior something like this small. So it will become barely visible. So it means RDF will go from 0 to the first minimum. So if you see when I draw drew this diagram, this is 0. It goes from first to first minima, then it goes like this, like this, and then it goes like this. Okay. So if I want to draw this curve, so this is your GR and this is your R. So this is the first maxima, this is your first minima. Okay. So this I will number as R minim 1. And again, if when it falls like this, this will be r minimum 2. We are not concerned about r max, we are concerned about r min. So, rdf increases from 0 to the first minima and the number of molecules, if I want to calculate what is the number of molecules in the first coordination shell, then I have to use the coordination number. So, that coordination number is given by this expression. What is that expression? So, number of molecules in the first coordination shell will be simply equal to the density of that shell into the integral. So, density of that shell into goes from R min 1 and multiplied by GR into R square dr. So, this will give you the number of molecules. If this is a central molecule, how many molecules are at the its interface? This is R. So, interatomic distance is R this is a central atom, how many molecules? So, these are the n1 number of molecules. Now, if you want to calculate how many molecules are in the second solvation shell, so you will only go to this distance, r min by r2. In the first solvation shell, you will go to this distance. Second solvation shell, that will take up this factor n2, 4 pi rho by r min 1 to r min 2. Okay? This is very important. So, this way you can find out the number of molecules surrounding a central atom. So, this is the second coordination shell, the first coordination shell. This is very important in the case of computer simulation methods because you know the van der Waals radii for these atoms are known hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. So, chemically bonded species such as if I have a HF molecule, these are chemically bonded, there is a chemical bond between them. This chemically bonded species, the bond length of this is shorter than the sum of their van der Waals radii. So, whatever van der Waals radii of hydrogen and fluorine I have, the bond length between them will be lesser. Because HF has a bond length of 0 0.92 which is less than the van der Waals of the atoms, it comes to closely around 2.5 Armstrong. If I take the some of the van der Waals area. So, it means it is a chemical bond. So, your RDF plot will look something else. So, it means when I have the distances to be very large, separation distance between non bonded atoms because many of the atoms are not bonded. So, the non bonded atoms may be equal or greater than the sum of the atomic radii. If it is lesser, then we can say there is some association between the atoms, some non bonded interaction is there such as hydrogen bond. So, it means, but if the atom atom separation distance is greater than the chemical bond distance, but less than the sum of the atomic bond distance, then there is some interaction, we can call that van der Waals type of interaction. So, it means the location of the first peak in the radial distribution function and also its magnitude gives an indication of the type and strength of the atom atom interaction. For example, if you want to see one example that is of the OH at group. So, in the case of OH group, what you have is 
So OH pair, if I want to write this OH group, suppose you have another OH group here. Let's say water, you have many OH pairs there. So what it says is the separation between these two is around 2.3 to 2.5 Armstrong. This is comes under the range of what we call hydrogen bonding. But so the distance between these two O and OH even though they are non-bonded is lesser than that between those the sum of the atomic van der Waal radii of oxygen and hydrogen atom. Sum of these two radius of oxygen plus hydrogen is 2.72 Armstrong. So it means if you have this type of phenomena you can always say from the RDF if you plot the RDF if it is something like this, so in the RDF this particular peak if I say the distance it will be close to 2.3 Armstrong then you can always say there will be multiple peaks first you will observe at 2.3 Armstrong then you can observe a peak let us say I want to plot how the oxygen and hydrogen are to be plotted then you will have additional peak corresponding to O and H. So the first peak the first maxima will if it arrives at 2.3 Armstrong then you can tell some hydrogen bonding is occurring. So the location of the first peak in the radial distribution and also its magnitude if this magnitude is very high GR is very high it gives an indication of the type and strength of the atomic interaction. So the hydrogen bonding actually qualitative idea comes into this picture if you plot the GR values. So that was all about the coordination number, so I will stop here. So I have skipped many of the steps where you derive the pressure term, please go to this, this particular book the chapter 11 of Sandler and uh, do the derivation correctly. If you see the here do a step, I did a stepwise and you have to consult the some good advanced mathematics uh, book for solving the multidimensional integral. So that is all we have finished with this radial distribution function and thermodynamic properties. In the next lecture we will actually start with the molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo simulation or the computer simulation methods. Thank you.